Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, August 7th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to kick things off with the S&P 500 weekly time frame. That's where we like to start our analysis. Each bar on this chart represents one week worth of trading. And you can see here it is only Tuesday, but we are on that positive upswing still, we are up 20 handles so far at the close of the session here on Tuesday, and that is good for 0.69% to the upside. So as it stands now, if we were to close here, if we were to close positive on the week, we would have our sixth positive week for the S&P 500. All started with the sort of turnaround week here back at the start of July. We were up one and a half percent on this session right here. And that has really paved the way to this nice uptrend that we've been experiencing for the past month and a half of trading. So when we look at levels here on the weekly chart, what we'll notice is we are now just a stone's throw away from the prior all time highs. We have to go back to January of this year to find those old highs in the S&P 500, but they come in, the intraday highs come in at 2872.87. You can see we're at 2859 here at the close on Tuesday. So we're about 0.3% away, give or take, in the S&P 500. It seems you know, all but certain that the market wants to sort of retest those prior levels. And I think the action there or the reaction there is going to be of interest to us as traders to just see how the market handles the prior uh, pivot here back from and prior all time highs back from uh, January of 2018. So that is what's going on here in the weekly time frame. I got the MACD on my charts today. Uh, I you know, switch things up. I, I always like to look at eight and 20 period moving averages. That's generally what you see in my charts. We're looking at a MACD that is the eight and 20 parameter set. And you can see here on the weekly time frame as we visualize what's happened here is as if we get back up and retest these prior highs here from January, we'll note that uh, as many will consider this to be sort of negative divergence here in momentum as we start to make a potential or as we retest those levels with a lower high here in the MACD. And all that suggests to us is that the path that the market took to reclaim, to retest, to climb back up to these old highs just were a lot longer, was slower, a lot of back and forth trading as we can see here in the price action. That really slows down the MACD here and that gives us sort of the, the lower high peak here. Does not suggest that we have to fail at these old highs, but it does suggest to us that, you know, it, it is a point at which we do want to pay extra attention to uh, when we start to, or if we start to get back up there. So that is the S&P 500. That is the weekly time frame. All things continue higher here. Bulls in control. When we go down to the daily chart, really same exact MO. The bulls are in control here. We've been up now four days in a row, almost six weeks in a row for the S&P 500, going on the fourth day in a row here for the S&P 500 on the daily chart. And you can see we are above last uh, Wednesday's highs here, the 25th, when we peaked out just around 28.46. We took out those highs to start off the week and we continued higher here today. Didn't quite close at the highs of the session, pulled off just a little bit, but uh, that is gonna be our uh, kind of uh, uh, more active level to pay attention to. Uh, I like to always look at these prior pivots here. So the highs from Wednesday, the 25th, 28.46, 46. If the market starts to roll over here and we get some type of false breakout, if we get some type of loss of this pivot level, that would give me some pause. That would give me some concern. As of now, we do not see any indication of that just yet. The market is marching higher on its merry way. We'll see if the small fade here uh, on you know at the close on Tuesday results in a further pullback Wednesday. But the benefit of the doubt still belongs to the buyers at this point, price action wise, they are still holding trend. They are still holding trend line, moving averages uh, above this pivot point, whatever you want to throw at this for technical analysis. Uh, it is still a bullish chart until proven otherwise. Now, one thing that does have me uh, certainly alert, again, not going to put me in a bearish stance alone, but I posted this chart yesterday. Yesterday is the VIX. The VIX here is closing with a 10 handle. So this has to be, or this is the lowest levels since January January 
of this year. So that tells us that there's a lot of complacency right now. Maybe the uh, volatility market here is getting it right and we are ready to trend higher in that nice kind of very low grind higher sweet spot that the market likes to trend in that we've seen time and time again in this bull market. That very well may be the case. All this suggests to me is that there is complacency out there. It's time to pay attention. Market up six weeks in a row. Short term, you know, S&P 500 up four days in a row. NASDAQ's up six days in a row. For me personally, with the VIX at that level, all those kind of scenario combined, it probably tells me that I don't want to be getting aggressively long right now. If you have positions on that you're trailing a stop, you're taking profits, all that makes total sense. But to be, you know, jumping into the market here on today, you know, August 8th, kind of, you know, going all in on the long side probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So uh, do keep that in mind. Just understand where the market has kind of come from here, where volatility is and uh, pay attention to those bigger levels. So S&P 500, that's what I'd be paying attention to. Let's go out to the Russell 2000 here. Taking its time, hasn't broken out to new highs, hasn't taken out its June highs here. It has really uh, kind of moved sideways, kind of developing a longer kind of sideways range here. Isn't necessarily bearish at this point. It's just something that uh, we should be noting that the small caps here are sort of reluctantly kind of moving sideways after a nice run through March through May and June, but it is still moving sideways here. We have clear upside targets around 170, or I shouldn't say a target necessarily, but upside resistance here. That's where the market failed. Overhead supply kind of kicked in right around that 170 level. So if, um, you know, if the market wants to get back up there, that's where we should be paying attention to. Otherwise, it does seem to be kind of uh, moving higher, mulling higher here in this little channel. You may, some may look at this as a bear flag. For me, uh, one of the levels I was paying attention to is this 166, really 166.50 to 167, this general range in here. Remember, we did get short the Russell 2000 back on the 27th. We covered it here on the 2nd as it started to take out the prior day's highs for or a small loss and really just said this needed more time, needed more urgency here to really kind of set up. So far it is continuing higher, sluggish, a little bit of a reversal here today, maybe at the upper end of this trend line. Maybe that's the spark, but really to me needs some more proof, needs some more energy, some momentum uh, to really kind of get us excited one way or the other. So for now, I'd be paying attention to say 166 and change all the way up to 170. It's a pretty tight level, but for you active traders, that's what I'd be watching. For the NASDAQ 100, we are up now six days in a row here at the close, getting really close to the prior uh, closing highs here back on Wednesday. The NASDAQ did fill this open gap here. So back on the 26th, notice how we saw we had this gap down session and uh, we really had this big open gap up here. In fact, did we actually close all of it? may not have. No, technically we didn't quite close everything because uh, we would have to rally all the way back up to about that 182 level. So we are back up more or less to those old highs. I had this trend line drawn from my last recap video here and you can see we are kind of back testing it, trying to reclaim, trying to get on the other side of this trend line here. That would be a short term win for the bulls here on the NASDAQ 100. But let's just pay attention that we are up six days in a row. Again, if you're chasing, if you're allocating fresh capital right now, just understand where the market is has come from and the environment that you are looking at. Otherwise, uh, the bulls are doing a good job at bidding this back up and continuing in this trend. So all in all, recapping the action here, short term, intermediate term, bulls still have control. There is, however, based on the VIX, based on, uh, you know, you could look at a couple of other uh, metrics too. Um, there is some complacency. That's my dog in the background. Uh, some complacency right now in the market overall. So let's just be aware aware of that. So let us get into some of the other major markets here. We'll go to TLT next. You can see on the week is down just about a half a percent, making its way back down towards the lower end of last week's range. This thing is still messy, moving sideways in a larger structural sort of uh, sideways pattern here. And we are kind of in the middle of it and in a short term downtrend. Next up, we go to oil. Oil here is still moving sideways here. Not a whole lot of movement in these markets over the past couple of days, uh, really week or so. USO has been moving sideways between say 14 and 1450 or so. We had this kind of breakdown 
bulls were covered. It is now back up to levels seen from just last week. So really just kind of mulling sideways here, waiting for, again, some more urgency, some more momentum, some more trend to really kind of kick into gear here. Otherwise, it's kind of stale and moving sideways. Natural gas is getting some momentum. You can see it is picking up even on volume and price action wise. This is uh, recovering, recouping, rallying back to the June highs here that we, when we went sideways around this 24 level. You can see we're almost back up to that area now. Volumes picked up. So some interesting kind of bullish development there. Some activity going on in natural gas. May not be the cleanest chart. There's some supply to the left of us. So be aware of that. But uh, that is something that uh, does seem to be getting a little bit of action right now while most things are stale. Finally, we'll end with the metals. We'll look at gold, which continues to be a horrendous mess here. Uh, we are still down into the right. Sellers in control. Really, uh, you know, we started to stabilize in here last week or so, and that ultimately gave way to new lows. So the trend to the downside continues. Silver, uh, again, holding up better than gold. And I think that is generally a bullish characteristic for the metals when you got silver trying to hold on and, and outperform at least relative to GLD. And you do have silver that hasn't broken to new lows. Uh, the trend here to the downside is much more uh, mild compared to what gold has been experiencing over the past several weeks. So whether or not that leads to something and has bigger implications down the road, uh, we'll have to see. For now, silver moving sideways hasn't broken to new lows. If we can defend the low here back from July the 19th, uh, I think that would be constructive in putting in some type of sideways, uh, you know, bottom or, or turnaround action here for silver, but not yet, not ready just yet. So that is the recap for the midweek action here. Hopefully you guys are off to a good start. Thank you so much as always for watching. You can subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of the latest videos every Tuesday and Friday. Trade ideas come out on Wednesday. Thanks so much and talk to you later this week.